we're going to be talking about invoices and sales receipts. Invoices and sales receipts are pretty similar as in they both record a sale. However, there are some differences. Invoices are made whenever the sale is made and you're going to send the invoice to the customer and they're going to pay at their convenience. Sales receipts are made whenever the sale is complete and they hand you payment right then and there. Whenever an invoice is created, it will actually increase that customer's accounts receivable account on the balance sheet. It will also record the income on the profit and loss. Whereas whenever a sales receipt is recorded, it goes straight to recording the income on the profit and loss and it never hits the accounts receivable because you've already received that money. There is two ways that you can do this. The first way is going to plus new. And you can see here we can either select invoice or we can select sales receipt. I'm going to select invoice. And this is going to bring up an invoice where I can enter in the customer's name. And then my customer's name for this example is cool cars. And you can see how all their information already popped up. They have the email, their billing address, the invoice date, and when it's due. So next, we're going to select the product and service that we provided for them. So we're going to select gardening as the product and service. And the rate is zero right now because that's customizable. So we're going to say this gardening service costs $100. So now whenever we scroll down, we can see that the balance due is $100. And then we can save and send. This will save it and send it to the customer for them to pay on their own time. The next way we can record an invoice or a sales receipt is by going to the customer. So we're going to customers and we're going to search up our customer, which is Cool's Cars. And it's actually right here at the beginning of the list. So we're going to click on it. And then we're going to go to new transaction, and then invoice is right here, and sales receipt is right there. So this time around, I'm going to show what a sales receipt looks like. So I'm going to click on sales receipt. Notice how the customer has already entered. All of their information is already entered. That's something that we don't have to do. But we can go ahead, enter the product and service that we provided for them. And this one, we did some design work for them, so that's going to be our service. And we see that it has a rate $75 an hour, and this took us five hours, so we're going to put the quantity as five. The difference between the invoice and the sales receipt is we have this extra box just down here that says payment method, reference number, and deposit to. The payment method is how you were paid. So this time around, we were paid with a check. So I'm going to select check, and the reference number that you can put is the check number. So we're going to say 1201 was our check number. And we're going to deposit it to undeposited funds. So whenever you scroll down on this sales receipt, you can see that there is a zero balance due. And this is because we're telling QuickBooks that we've already received this money. And then we can save and send it. So this will send it to the customer that says, I've already paid. This is your sales receipt for the service provided. So sometimes we have a situation where you want to bill a customer every month for an ongoing service. So in our sample company, this is a lawn company. So say you have a customer that you're mowing for them every month and you want to bill them every month. Instead of going to each month, going to each customer and creating these sales receipts or invoices, you can actually create a reoccurring sales receipt that automatically sends it to them. And you do this by, we're going to go to this little gear icon and we're going to hit reoccurring transactions. We're going to do new, and our transaction type is going to be sales receipt. We're going to hit OK. So this looks extremely similar to what a normal sales receipt looks like with a few differences. The first thing is you can, you can name it. We're going to name our template monthly mowing scheduled. We're going to want to create it three days in advance, the interval that we put. The customers going to be Amy's Bird Sanctuary. And we want it to automatically send email. So this will automatically send her emails every month, reminding her of the sales receipt. You can select what interval you want this sales receipt to be recorded on. 
So this one's on monthly. You could do it daily, weekly, yearly. And you can select what day you want it to be created on. So I'm going to leave it as monthly on the first day of every one month. So that means it's going to create the sales receipt on the first day of every month. And the start date, we're going to put today's date. And you can put an ending date or you can leave it as none and it'll just go on indefinitely. So as we scroll down, we're going to put our service, which is mowing. And since mowing, since not as current service, we're going to create it real quick. This is a service, so we're going to select service. We're going to call it mowing. And hit save and close. And we're going to charge $150 a month for this. And this is not taxable, so we're going to unselect that. So since this is a sales receipt, this is saying that this is getting paid as soon as it's created. You could create this whenever they're sending you a check every month. This will tell them that they've paid it. Or when a lot of times this is created is whenever you can accept online payments. And it will give you, whenever you select the payment method, it will give you the option of an ACH or a credit card. And whenever you select that it'll bring up another little box under all of this where you can put in the ACH information or the credit card information. Due to the limitations of the sample company, it's not going to pop up that way for me. Something also to remember if you're going to draft a payment every month, either by ACH or the credit card agreement, is you're going to want to have uh, an ACH or a credit card agreement authorization form signed by you and the customer stating that you can pull the money every month. Like, subscribe, and comment on this video, and we will see you next time.